My name is Dr. Frank Albo. I'm a professor of history at the University of Winnipeg, and we're about to embark on a digital tour of the Manitoba Legislative Building. This is the front entrance of the building, which as you can see, has an exquisite group of statues in its pediment. I would like to draw your attention to the woman seated in the center of the relief. Looking closely beneath her feet is the word Manitoba, which of course is an allusion to the province of Manitoba, but also points to the Roman goddess of fertility, the Magna Mater. The architect was intent on drawing this connection between Manitoba, which was the keystone province in the distribution of grain, and this ancient divinity representing fertility and abundance. And you could see these symbols of fertility on either side of her. If you look to her right is an infant child being caressed by her mother, and on her left is a cornucopia of produce seated on a man's lap. These symbols recur elsewhere. Looking above her head is a winged headdress with a miniature sphinx on top. She wears a military breastplate and also the Roman symbol of authority on her lap, a fasces. These symbols are all meant to be read in order to understand the coded language in the architecture of this building. On the roof of the building, we find two oddly placed Egyptian sphinxes, probably the last thing that you'd expect to find in the frigid prairies of Manitoba. It was these statues which first drew my attention to the mysteries of this building many years ago. The architect of this building was classically trained, meaning that elements of Greek, Roman, and Egyptian architecture were woven together to represent the canon of Western civilization. But he took this idea a step further. Looking closely at the Sphinx's chest, we find a hieroglyphic inscription, which is in fact legible. Along the outside, the phrase, the good God who gives life. And in the interior is an oval cartouche, which has a scarab beetle, a playing board, and a solar disc, which is in fact the name of a pharaoh named Tutmosis III, who is long associated with architecture, mysteries, and at least one secret society. We are in the Grand Staircase Hall on the main floor of the building, which is chocked full of mysterious numbers and symbols of protection. The two colossal bison, of course symbols of Manitoba, are also allusions to the sacred bulls that protected the sites of holy places. The perimetering the room are lion's heads, and directly above is the strangest figure of all. It's the bust of Medusa with her snaky hair, and she's there as a guardian of protection. The stairs leading up to the building are three flights of 13. The length of the bison are 13 feet, and 13 repeats throughout the building. But even more strange is the dimensions of the room, exactly 66.6 .6 feet in width and 66.6 .6 feet in length. Alas, the number of the beast. We are now on the second floor of the building in the Grand Rotunda. Featured before us is a remarkable mural of Canada's efforts in the First World War. It was painted by the Belgian muralist Frank Brangwen. Brangwen had a penchant for hiding images of Christ in his work, and in this particular mural, we see the Passion of Christ. Note the figure in the center wearing the white shroud. You can see he's illuminated by a halo formed by the white shirt of the person behind him. On closer inspection, you could see he's being helped bear the crossbeam of the Lord indicated by the canon in the background. But that's not all. The great reveal is hidden in plain view directly above him. It is a shrine of the Madonna and Child, the emblem of the Christian faith. Taken as a whole, this entire scene is a veiled allegorical message. Taking this a step further, the mural is also uncannily similar to an initiation into the mysteries of Freemasonry, where the candidate is bare-chested on the arm of the senior deacon. So is it a war mural? Is it an image of Christ? Or is it a surreptitious nod to the secrets of Freemasonry? To the east of the building is the Lieutenant Governor's reception suite, a room whose interior dimensions parallel exactly the proportions of the Holy of Holies of King Solomon's Temple. According to the biblical tradition, the Ark of the Covenant was housed in the Holy of Holies, but it was veiled by an ornately woven blue curtain. You will not find the Ark of the Covenant here. It's hidden beyond those curtains before you, directly above this room perhaps the most interesting statuary in the building. It's officially called the War Chest. Outside, directly above the blue-curtained room, we find this chest. Of course, this is not the real Ark of the Covenant, which was apparently lost after the original temple in Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians 2,600 years ago. 
It does, however, carry many striking similarities. The Bible tells us that two winged guardians called cherubim protected the holiness of the ark. Here, you find two winged warriors, one with a Native American headdress and the other a Roman centurion. By far, the most well-known feature of the Manitoba Legislative Building is the famed Golden Boy. But what most people don't know is that he was modeled after a famous 15th century statue of Hermes, the Greek messenger of the gods and a reputed author of a compendium of esoteric writings on magic, alchemy, and astrology. It was this body of writings that had a significant influence on the architect, Frank Worthington Simon. And in the earliest lore of Freemasonry, Hermes was revered for the invention of everything known to the human intellect and for preserving the knowledge of a mason's craft and transmitting it to humankind. Is it possible that the Golden Boy is more than just an icon representing Canada's spirit of enterprise, but rather a cleverly disguised effigy in honor of this divine patron of mystical science? Perhaps this explains why he's surrounded by sculptural groups representing the noble elements of earth, air, water, and fire, the so-called materia prima for the hermetic alchemist. As I see it, these powerful ideas were built and encoded in the designs of this building. Now here we are at last, in the mystical heart of the building, the Pool of the Black Star, with its perfect circle of exactly 55 feet across. From the center of the Black Star, a single whisper amplifies through all the branches of government. The remarkable echoes in this room resound eerily throughout the entire building, speaking not only of the importance of harmonics and divine intervals, something very significant to the architect's design, but also certain intervals that were believed to have divine powers. This is one feature in the building for which no words or images can do real justice. It must be experienced. For myself, I've been bellowing from the center of the star for the last five years, five simple words. Bring back the Winnipeg Jets. Who knows, perhaps there's something too wishing upon a star.